Today on Harbor Speaks, we're visiting the Arbor Day event at the Banning Museum in Wilmington, California. We'll be talking with the event organizers, visiting several of the displays of the participating organizations, and talking with some of the volunteers and the recipients of trees. My name is Mike Herrera. For 40 years, I worked in a nonprofit field. During this time, I've noticed there were hundreds of nonprofits, organizations, and individuals making a positive difference in the community. My mission is twofold to inform the community of these services and to recruit help for these programs. Hey, I'm here with Fernando from the LA City Councilman's Office. Uh, how are you doing, Fernando? Good. Doing really, really good. How are you? So, really good. And, you know, it's, it's, this is a great event going on here. What, 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 are you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's uh, one of the first times we have Arbor Day in Wilmington. Um, and what better what better place than the Banning Mansion, you know? Um, as you heard, we're planting uh, over a thousand trees, not only here at Banning Park, but also throughout the community. So, um, you know, when we talk about environmental justice, climate change, this is literally the, the, the simplest thing you can do, but probably the most effective thing you can do when it comes to, um, you know, helping the environment, providing shade, cleaning up our air, and making sure that not only we're protected, but our generations to come are also protected. So they're not just planting trees; they're also giving out trees. Yeah. So um, as you as you saw the lines back there, uh, we're giving out um, shade trees. Um, we're also giving out um, avocado trees, which are amazing because not only do they provide uh, shade, but they also provide the fruit of the avocado, uh, which is always helpful. Um, so take advantage. But if you didn't get a tree today, you can always go to City Plants or visit the website um, for your tree. What the city does, they can actually go and plant a tree as long as you commit to um, watering it for two or three years. They're happy to plant a tree for you right outside your residence. So, Well, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, this good. gentleman just received some trees. And what is your name, sir? My name is Jesus. Hey, Jesus, uh, what are you going to do with these trees? Uh, I'm going to plant them in my yard. Really? Yes, sir. What, what, kind, of, what kind of trees did you get? Uh, we, getting, uh, we got ourselves an uh, apple tree here and an apple, avocado tree, and the, uh, this one is a shade tree. Uh, something uh, bells it doesn't have the. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Pink trumpet. A pink yeah. trumpet. So we got to get a shade tree and two fruit trees. Well, it's looking really good. Yeah. So that's how it works. You get one fruit. You got to get a shade tree along with it. Do you live here in the neighborhood? I live in Wilmington. Yes, I do. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, well, we'll we'll see how. It, well, hopefully, you're here next year. We'll see how you did. Well, this is my first time. I, I probably will be back with my wife. Get some more trees for next year, also. Great. Thank you very much. And we're here at the University of California booth. Uh, what, what exactly is this booth for? Hi, we're the LA County uh, Master Gardeners. So we are community gardeners that um, kind of have signed up to do volunteer hours in the community for events like this. And um, yeah, we have information about everything that is kind of impacting the county right now. So we have different things about trees, beneficial insects, um, anything that people have questions about. We have free seeds. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, your name is? My name is Sandra Contreras. What is your title? I'm just a volunteer master gardener. Wow. Awesome. We're here at the uh, LA Department of Transportation booth here at the, the tree company or the tree fair. And I am here with uh, Diana. Diana and Jessica. Jessica. Diana and Jessica. And both of them are got a nice display here. What 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 exactly are you trying to show off here? So we're with LA DOT Transit. Uh, we're with the dash that runs within the area. So we just try to promote uh, whatever dash that runs through here, as far as like scheduling. Uh, if you wish to catch a dash now, we can de uh, direct them where they can catch a dash. We're only fifty cents. Uh, if they wish to apply uh, as a senior or a student or. Um, college vocational or disability they may do so here with us at our booth and if they wish to purchase a tap card we can help them do that as well. Well for 50 cents you can go wherever you want? Uh, on, a, on one of our dashes yes and if, yeah. and if you use your tap card um, it's 35 cents. What, what kind of things do you have here today? We have uh, our giveaways so we have our bus cut our bus cutouts which are, is the dash um, you can do a little bus with it for kids. You wish to take a pen, a ruler, a card holder. You can actually have one of these on the back of your phone. Makes it easier for you to put your tap card on the go right away once you hop on one of our buses. Uh, a schedule, applications, 
and students now ride Dash for free if they're interested. So if you're in regular high school or in something like that, you can get it for free? You can. It's uh, elementary, middle school, high school, and college vocation that can ride for free. Yes. So tell me, what, what is your booth all about? The National Park Service, Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. What is your name? Selene Castillo. So what are you displaying here today? Um, yeah, so we have La Ranger Troca. Um, it is a food mobile converted into like this interpretive uh, thing that we can drive around and bring to these awesome events, Ciclovia, LA County Fair. And so we bring out fun stuff like these pelts. We have some skulls of animals. And so we're just talking to people about some of the urban wildlife that you can find in LA County and some Monica Mountains as well. So we have P22 over there, we've got a bobcat, and lots of information. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And we're also here with Ranger Chris, and he is going to tell us a little bit about the, the cat display he has here. Uh, yeah, we have a, a couple posters, and we have a nice display over here of a cougar, a puma, a mountain lion. These, uh, especially the picture down here, the photograph, um, is authentic in the sense that we do have quite a few mountain lions in the Santa Monica Mountains. And they roam fairly freely, but they also interact with um, urban areas, of course. They're amongst us, shall we say. They are with us in every aspect. And some of that is very good and some of it maybe not so good. They mostly stay in the hills. They uh, all have their uh, areas that they um, patrol, let's say, and, and they are somewhat confined to, in a sense, because of the urban areas. But interacting with the urban areas uh, cannot be such a great thing either because people tend to put things out that may harm the animals and things like that, specifically the mountain lions and those kinds of things. They're not necessarily harmful to, uh, let's say, society, the culture in a sense, because um, they basically uh, will travel at night and things like that and not so much during the day. But in the sense of being interactive with the urban areas, neighborhoods and things like that, at times, if they're invited too much, in other words, food's left out and things like that, or... Uh, um, you know, trash cans are left open and those kinds of things, they will scavenge quite a bit, which is kind of a sad thing in a sense. And at the same time, going along with that, what really harms them is, and in that scavenging and things like that, because they are in need of food, because sometimes, of course, in the areas that they roam, that isn't available in the mountains and things like that, they get into the urban areas. And we use, um, you know, society in a sense, we use a lot of poisons and things like that. So when the Mountain lion, lions tend to scavenge into neighborhoods and, and urban areas, and even into the cities at times. And uh, they'll, they'll um, maybe not know the difference, of course, uh, through their instincts and things like that, that something is poison or not. And they'll eat animals that have ingested those kinds of poisons, those rat poisons and things like that. You know, we only have one type here, and that's these, the type of cougar, or the type of mountain lion. That's, that is, again, you could just say mountain lion, whereas, you know, somewhere like uh, far away in Florida or something like that is a totally different kind of maybe panther. I'll tell you, the only rule I have about mountain lions is if, if, if they're over there, I'm over there. <laughs> and we're here at the Office of Beautification booth, and I'm here with... Thomas Corrales. And Ana Wizar. Oh, wow. So let me let me ask you this. So what, what what exactly is the purpose of your, your uh, office? Well, our purpose is to uh, provide uh, graffiti abatement throughout the, um, our neighborhoods. We have a non-contract, uh, non-profit uh, called GAP, Gang Alternative Program. They're the one who do the graffiti abatement. And we're also here to, uh, go ahead. So we also, what we do is we provide free tools for community cleanup. So if anyone is ever interested in hosting a community cleanup, we provide all the tools free of charge. We can even deliver them to you guys as well. How about the trucks? Do you, are the trash trucks? Uh, that would be uh, sanitation. Yeah, that's but actually we that also Bureau Sanitation that, that handles that. We also have trucks that go throughout the uh, community picking up bulky items, and they do cleanups as well. And then that's through our office. Wow, that's great. You know, I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested. How would they get a hold of you guys? Well, they could either call 311 and report any graffiti or any bulky items or any weed abatement they, that our contractors can do, and they, um, just 311. So we're here at the Fruit Institute table ex ex exhibit here, and what is your name? Allison. Joanna. Joanna. Uh, Riley. Riley. And what is your name? Harold. Oh, she's shy. She's real quiet. Hey, uh, so what is a fruit institute? Fruit institute. Fruit institute. So we are a 
backyard fruit tree service. We take care of people's home orchards and help them. Um, we uh, so we're the only fruit tree service or fruit tree specialist in operating in LA County that you can call who can come and do all your pruning, feeding, composting, mulching, um, and help you grow delicious, nutritious, amazing backyard fruit. Wow, that's amazing. I, I didn't know you had this. Hey, we're here now at the LA Sanitation Environment with the city of Los Angeles, and they're going to tell us about their booth here. What is your name? Aditi. Corey. And your name? Melinda. Melinda. She's the shy one in the back. Okay, I see. Tell me, what exactly do you guys do? Uh, so we work for the, uh, the LA Sanitation and Environment. Uh, we are specifically part of the Street Tree Planting Program. Uh, so any city of LA resident can sign up to have a street tree planted outside of their house. All they have to do is commit to water it for three years. Um, so tell, tell me, what do you do? Uh, I also work with the street tree program. Uh, just something to add on a little bit more. Uh, the process can take three to six months, but uh, residents can apply online. They can send in a postcard. Uh, we really encourage it. So how did you get involved with this? Uh, good morning. I'm one of the people that work on getting the funding, the grants, and trying to bring in the money to do the street tree program and our biodiversity program so that we can measure all the plants and animals that live within the city of Los Angeles and find out ways to conserve our biodiversity and enhance it where we can. All of the plants and animals, that's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> and it's easy to use to sign up through iNaturalist and then you become a community scientist and you just GPS where your lizard is or where your plant is and send it in and it gets tagged and then we can map it throughout the city and find out how to make sure we've got all the plants and animals that we need to sustain a healthy community. So I'm here at the booth for the Banning Museum which is right behind us and these two people are from, your name is? Anita Moore. Kathy Sowers. And what is your, your title here? Okay, I'm a volunteer at the Banning Museum. Well, you? It's just the same. I'm a volunteer here at the museum. Two great volunteers. What can you say? This place is mostly run by volunteers, right? Yes, it is. A, a group of hardworking volunteers. Of course, we're always looking for more volunteers. Oh, that's great. That's great. Absolutely. We'd love to have anyone join us at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays in the Garden. Uh, so what do you have on display here? Okay, these are things from our garden. Uh, we have right now the, the uh, roses are about to burst into bloom, but we have a few roses here. Uh, one of our uh, most interesting roses is the Peggy Martin rose. Now with the, uh, what was the hurricane in uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, that was so devastating to so many people, Hurricane Katrina, this rose withstood everything. They found this thing of beauty uh, with all that devastation. And the lady, it's named after Peggy Martin, who found it. And she started selling this rose, starts of this rose, to raise funds for people who uh, lost so much during that devastation. And we are lucky enough to have a Peggy Martin at the Banning Museum. It's beautiful. Hey, what kind of things do you do as a volunteer? Um, we give tours. We work on uh, committees in the background, uh, trying to keep all of the uh, textiles and the dishes and the furnishings in tip-top order. We work with the um, museum's director, Michael Sanborn, and his staff. And then we uh, work in the garden on 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday mornings, and that's where we help the uh, city parks and recreation take care of the garden. We feed the roses, we deadhead them, we clip them back in January, we uh, break up all of the leaves from the wisteria, which right now is blooming, and that's a surprise, it's early this year. But uh, that's kind of what we do in a nutshell, isn't it? Yes, it is. We help out at events like this, too. Well, I thank you both very, very much. Uh, you know, you, your your job is really, really important, and we're so glad that you volunteer with with the thank community you here. Very much, and we hope to see many people here. This is a wonderful place. Yeah. We all love it. So we're here at the Friends of the LA River booth here, and these three are Stephanie, 
Mireya. Delena. Tell me, how did you get involved with the river? Um, uh, so I decided to look for nonprofits that I wanted to do something meaningful with, and that's how I got involved with uh, Friends of the LA River. How about you? Yeah, same. Just um, growing up in the San Fernando Valley, being sort of surrounded by all the concrete infrastructure, and you know, after I graduated college, I also wanted to do some meaningful work, and I found our organization, and we're fighting for ecological restoration and also equitable access, so bringing people and wildlife to the river. So, is this a nonprofit? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So I, I got involved. I'm actually a volunteer. I'm a docent. So I, I actually came here on a tour, or I came to the river on a tour with my school, um, my freshman year of university, and then I thought it was pretty cool. So I decided a couple years later to, to sign up for the docent program. Wow, this is amazing. I, uh, what, what, what kind of things do you have on display here? Yeah, so we have this on display, which tells us about the Casitas program that we're currently opposing which um, we're trying to fight for 100 acres of park along the river and this little section would be luxury apartments that we want to oppose because they would be a negative uh, part of the environment and then we also have some shirts which are donation based and we have our uh, river cleanup that's coming up soon um, in the last three weekends of April so we're just uh, and then lastly we have our LA Nature Fest that we're going to be at and we're promoting it for the Natural History Museum. That's, where, where's the river cleanup going to be? So there's three different sites um, all along the river. Um, we have Upper River, which is in the valley, Mid River, which is around Elysian Valley, around Dodger Stadium, and then also Lower River, which is here in Long Beach. Um, and each of those sites has a different day, and each day there will be various sites. Um, so it's really accessible. Everyone should be able to find a site that's closest to them and come out and pick up trash before it eventually ends up here in Long Beach in the ocean. Hey, I'm here with the Youth Build group, and tell me, guys, what, what is the Youth Build about? What is this AmeriCorps? So um, Youth Build, it's, um, it's uh, like a nonprofit organization. Um, we're actually in uh, the city of Lenox, but um, they're all over the, the United States. And um, it's actually a nonprofit, like I said, uh, we go out and we help the community. Um, it's, it's, a, um, it's a school, so it, um, it helps you get your high school diploma and you can earn your credits and you can uh, go and join construction and uh, go. we help, uh, we help uh, Habitat for Humanity um, during the week and um, like during the weekends we come out do things like this, we plant trees, we uh, clean the ocean, stuff like that, feed the homeless, we just do volunteer work um, and just stuff like that. It sounds, it sounds like a lot of fun, do you guys like doing this? Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're always here um, every weekend. We usually try to have a service event for the students. Um, what um, Chris didn't mention was that each student is um, trying to achieve 450 hours of community service. And at the end of it, they'll be receiving an educational award of? Uh, 1,600. So they have four uh, terms that they can do as an AmeriCorps. And so they come out and do community service every Saturday so that they achieve their scholarship. Oh, this is amazing. What, what, what school are you planning on going to? Oh, oh well, I just got accepted to USC for grad school. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. How about you guys? Where, where do you want to go? Where are we going to the military. To? Where? I'm joining the military. Are you joining the military? That's good. That's good. So same, same thing. It helped you, helped you get educated and it helped you get into college, too. How about you? I'm going to Yale. Yale? I'm going to go to Yale. Wow. Have you been accepted already? No. Oh, okay, I'll cut that part out. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. How about you? I went to uh, Santa Monica College. Santa Monica College. Yeah. They're real good with uh, this type of business, the yeah. uh, communications and stuff. So sign up. That's really cool. Now, where are you going to go? Um, I'm either going to go to El Camino or I might try the, the military, try to um, be a pilot or something in the military. Yeah. How about you? Where, where, where are you going to go? Well, I'm actually the youth program coordinator for the South Philly Youth Building. You know you're so short. I thought you were one of the kids. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> You gotta wear high heels. You gotta wear high heels, I think. <laughs> How about you? Where, where are you gonna go? I wanna go to Cal State Dominguez Hills. Cal State Dominguez? That's where I went. That's where I finished, so that's good. How about you back there? I know you're hiding back there. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm one of the uh, math and science uh, teacher's assistant. So oh. uh, I got recently graduated college. So. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, how do you like the, the event today? So far, so good. Hey, this is a very interesting group. Now, listen to this real closely. Tell me, what, what's the name of your group? Um, we're a community service fraternity called Alpha Phi Omega. 
Alpha Pi Omega. Now, how, how did this thing get started? Um, it got started a long time ago by a lot of people <laughs> at our college. Um, yeah, basically, it's like a, it's got started started through Boy Scouting, and um, one of the Boy Scouts joined um, like college, and then he was really inspired by like the foundations of scouting. So he started a fraternity based on like the scouting laws and like values. Yeah. Is this all based out of UCLA? Yes, it is. Well, actually, it's, it has many chapters like nationwide. So there's, I feel like, a few hundred or more chapters like around college campuses, like around the nation. And there's a lot more members outside of UCLA too. Wow. But, well, how did you get involved with this? Uh, so I just joined my second year of college. I wanted to just be participate more in service, and I got flyered just on campus. And I decided to check out their events, and I've been in it ever since. And you're part of the UCLA too? Yeah. Awesome. So I got a whole group of UCLA Bruins here. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Okay, on a three, count of three, say go Bruins. One, two, three. Go Bruins! Yes. Thank you. Hey, we're at the Coalition for a Safe Environment Group, and I'm here with Jesse Marquez. Jesse, uh, how, how did this thing get started? Well, Arbor Day's been going on for the last, you know, 40, 50 years, but actually this is our first time that we were invited to participate. And so I told them that, you know, well, naturally, yes, we're a Wilmington-based organization. We're involved in our environmental issues and concerns, and so it was natural for us to jump in. That's great. So what are the things you're trying to uh, accomplish here? Well, it's a, Arbor Day is a day of planting trees, plants, vegetables, and things of that nature. So we, in our little display on the table here, what we did is that we wanted to make it simple for it, give ideas as to, you know, how to plant a garden. So we have eight photos here showing you different styles of what you can use. In some cases, like, you know, we have bricks, like you have in a block wall, you know. Right over here, there's an old coriander for making your salads that was converted into a pot. And so it just gives people ideas about that. The other thing is that because we're involved in environmental issues, you know, we have our posters right here that show what are the different types of environmental impacts that happen in the Wilmington community. Now, one thing that we are doing that is different for us this year is because of the coronavirus, we have something very unique. We have actually published a little two-page public health advisory on masks. Now, everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to go buy one of these paper masks. Well, those paper masks you see them using are not adequate. Even some of the doctors you're hearing on the news now have now died treating the patients. That's because the mask they were wearing is not good enough. You hear them reference an N95 or a P95. Well, the 95 represents that it's 90% effective in protecting you. What you need is to have an N100 or a P100, which means it's 99.97% effective. And the way you tell the difference is that the color magenta, this pink color. So if you're going to get any type of a mask, make sure it has this type of filter on it. And we have this information both in English and in Spanish. The other thing that we did is that in many cases, people don't know where to get these type of masks. So we actually published another document that shows you different styles of masks. And these are all low cost, less than $40. And then we give you the manufacturer, the model number, and you know information in terms of the price and the phone number, how to contact them. So this is something that's special for this year because as you might not have heard, right now, the coronavirus has now spread to 96 different countries. So we need to be prepared. So we're the first one now coming out with a public health advisory, which gives you more information that's being put out on the news. Out here, and you are? Hi, my name is Ara, and I'm here from the census team under the mayor's office. And I'm here today to share about the importance of census. As you may be aware, census will happen this year. It's 10-year population count. It's going to happen from next week, March 12th to end of July. You'll get mail that tell you to do it online or over the phone, so you can do that as well. And you'll get a form in your um, home. But if you can do it online or over the phone, that will be great. And I'm here to share, uh, share with handouts, activity for children, and poster too. And so, yeah, we're here today trying to spread the word on census. Thank you so much for this event. Now, where is the Theater Pain Foundation? It's up in Sun Valley, so just north of Burbank. And we have a sales yard, a wildflower walk, short hike. Um, you can come up and see our art gallery. And we have an educational building there. And that's where we offer our classes. Wow, 
this is amazing. What kind of stuff do you have on display here? We have an amazing little hummingbird nest. This is made of the floof from the sycamore seed pod and spider webs. A sycamore, so people know what a baby sycamore, which is a native tree, look like. And all sorts of information on native trees and the benefit of growing natives in your garden or yard. A packet of native wildflower seeds. It's a mix of poppy seeds and chia seeds, and these are native to California. Wow. So you're going to have your own wildflower garden in your, in your front yard or your backyard. So are you saying grass is not native to California? Not all grasses. The traditional grass that you see over there is no, is not native to California. Anything that you have to consistently water is not native to California. The nice thing about my yard is that the only time I water is to get the dust off my plants. I'm not watering to to feed the plants. I'm just watering to get the dust off every once in a while. Now, is this a picture of your yard here? This is not my yard, but this is an example of what a yard using native plants looks like. So you can walk outside your front door and you see a yard that looks like California. Wow. And you are? Uh, Ariella Dolan with okay. Amigos de los Rios and I'm a project associate. Oh, okay. So what, what have you got going on here? Um, today we are making seed bombs for uh, native wildflowers and we're also advertising our Saturday events every Saturday. If you go to amigoselosrios.org, you can always look at our volunteer calendar. But our main event is coming up on May 9th from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can stop in, stop out. Um, there's going to be five different locations. Um, we're going to start at Peck Park all the way down to Lashbrook Park and there's five different locations between there. Um, we're going to be planting native trees and shrubs painting walls, and um, that's mainly it, but we're really excited to come out on May 9th. We're really hoping to have a lot Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So the Atlas Conservation Corps, oh. and we have a school that's run through the Education Corps, so LA Conservation Corps has their own high school, and uh, so we put in students 18 to 24 who still haven't completed the high school diploma, and uh, they're able to complete their requirements with us and get the diploma and uh, potentially continue to work with LA Conservation Corps and uh, gain some work experience, stuff like that. But um, That's great. So what is your actual role here today? Our role, well, that's uh, just to assist with whatever uh, the Council District 15 requires from us, uh, planting trees, moving some bins, setting up canopies, just whatever they ask us, really. So, so it's a basic volunteer group. It's really it's good. Yeah, it is. It, it is a volunteer. Okay, so I'm here with the Harbor Christian Center group. And what does 914 mean? No, 9.14. It's a square mileage of Wilmington. And, and, and your particular thing is to help Wilmington? Yeah, so our heart is for our city, and we want to serve our city because we love everyone here. So what's your role here for today? We're going to plant trees. We're going to plant trees. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's all, all when it comes to... Yes. Oh, is that what you guys came for? I don't see any shovels here. No, not yet, but they're <laughs> going to accommodate everything as we get to our destination. Sounds great. Do, yeah. do you live in Wilmington? No, I live in the city of Carson. City of Carson? Yes, but we attend Harbor Christian Center. Yeah, it's a very popular church, I know. Every Sunday, it's, it's, every Sunday everybody's mad because they can't park anywhere, you know, but, <laughs> but, but that's okay. Yes. Yeah. So, hey, uh, do you guys have a cheer or anything? You know? How about go Harbor Christians or... Okay. Go, Go Harbor Christian Center! Center. <laughs> We're here at the Heal the Bay booth, and this is Dave Wiesoff with the Speakers Bureau portion of Heal the Bay. Oh, this is the Speakers Bureau for the Heal the Bay. Yes, I go all over this county to talk to all ages and stages of people about how we can keep the water off of Southern California safe, healthy, and clean for the animals and for the people that swim there and, and, and recreate there. And then we talk about water issues, the sources of our water, and how we can safely use, use our water better and, and conserve it. Uh, re uh, capture the rainwater that falls and sequester it into the ground and pump it out later to drink it. And so the number of programs, we have a wonderful little aquarium down at the uh, base of Santa Monica Pier where the kids come and public can come and see the you know, little sharks and stingrays and fish and, and uh, that sort of thing. Tell me, what's the neighborhood council? Yeah, so 
So we have 99 neighbor councils throughout the city of Los Angeles. They're all volunteer elected officials in the community. And the great thing is they get $42,000 a year from the city to make a big difference. So uh, we have neighbor council elections coming up. And so if you're interested, please go to empowerla.org. And we look forward to helping you out. I'm here at the Red Cross booth. I believe it's uh, for the LA lifeguard, city lifeguards. And can you tell me what you guys are here doing today? I mean, today, right now, we are just providing first aid services uh, for the uh, Arbor Day events. And also, we are demonstrating how to do uh, hands only CPR on adults and infants. Well, this, this is kind of scary looking, you know? <laughs> I, I saw you demonstrating earlier. What, what, what so basically what we're doing is just showing people what they can do in, a, in a, an emergency situation and how you could perform hands-on only CPR if you're not certified at the moment. So you will just continuously uh, do compressions um, and make sure you call 911. That's basically all we're telling people. Call 911, continuously do compressions to keep that person alive, circulating the blood, you know, uh, giving oxygen to the heart and to the brain. And that's all we're pretty much doing. And hopefully, you know, people can remember a little bit of this and be able to save a life. Great. That's awesome. I mean, you know, hey, uh, are you all three of you are lifeguards? Yeah, we're all three of uh, uh, certified lifeguards for LA City. Yeah. Okay. Is there a difference between city lifeguards and pool lifeguards? Or? Well, actually, so LA City lifeguards are pool lifeguards as well. But we also have a couple of other... Um, Depart, uh, sections where we are open water lifeguards. So we have Cabrillo Beach, we have uh, Balboa Lake, and what? Oh, Hanson Dam. That would be the three that we we have uh, facilities that are open water lifeguards. Well, that, that's pretty amazing what you guys do. I'm, I'm glad you guys are serving. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here at the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium exhibit, and I have with me Irene, Irene, and Sarah. Shauna. Shauna. This, this is one of been, always been one of my favorite places to go when I was a kid. Uh, how, how, uh, how, how, how are you involved in this? I'm staff there, part-time staff at the aquarium and having a ball. Really? Yes. So I used what, to be in IT. What is this you have in your hands here? I have a mako shark jaw with its rows of teeth ready to come out, ready to be lost if need be. It looks pretty ferocious to me. Maybe later. <laughs> how, how, how do you like this? Uh, I work at the aquarium in the education department. And since this is an Arbor Day event, I just wanted to remind everyone it's not just about trees. We get oxygen from the seaweed in the ocean. So when you breathe, one breath, thank you, trees. Second breath, thank you, ocean. So I brought with us some kelp because it actually does photosynthesis as well. So we wanted to remind everyone of how important the ocean is and we brought some of our local uh, specimens. These are all live animals you could see at Cabrillo Aquarium. So what is your part of this? Um, I, I also work in education. I started off as a volunteer at the aquarium when I was about 10. Um, and now I'm 35, still uh, working at the aquarium and doing outreach. Well, they're not going to get rid of you, are they? They've tried, and uh, they can't. <laughs> they finally got, my mom finally retired. She also uh, worked there, too. <laughs> well, we thank you very much for your service. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping and doing this for us. This, this, this is the very first neighborhood council, isn't that right? Yes. In 2001, we were the first certified neighborhood council in Los Angeles. Well, we connect uh, the community of Wilmington to our L.A. City services, and many of them are out today for Arbor Day. What is, what is your name again? I'm Valerie Contreras. You're the president of the... Yes, I'm the current president. I'm serving my second term. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And it's all volunteer work, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. It's quite a commitment, but it's worth it to have a say-so uh, on what takes place in our community. We're literally the voice of the community so we represent the community right. yes we, we uh, try to stay ahead of what's happening and keep our stakeholders informed on new projects um, city services my la 311 and uh, we advocate for uh, whatever the community brings to our meetings we have our meetings uh, the fourth 
Tuesday of every month at Fanning High School, and it's open to everyone. Everyone's welcome to participate in our uh, committees. We have beautification, uh, planning and land use, bylaws, uh, public works. We have quite a bit of uh, uh, committee meetings taking place throughout the month. So how do you like today's event? I think it's great. We need more trees. We definitely want to encourage people to help the environment. So I, I think it's great. I'm glad that there's such a good turnout. We have great weather today. There was forecast for rain. But look, sunshine. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So Valerie, what do you have here? Well, today we have uh, something for community engagement where stakeholders can come out and there's seedlings. So what you do is you put this in there. You choose a seed, whatever it is that you'd like to grow. Uh, we've brought carrots, cilantro, cucumbers, uh, cauliflower. And so you put the seed in there and then you you add the, uh, the mulch to it, water it, and in 10 days your seed will sprout. And then you can plant it and, uh, and grow your vegetables. So I'm here with Elizabeth and she is one of the organizers of this event. How do you think it went today? I think it's a great turnout. We're really happy to just get together and celebrate this great day. Um, it's it's such a joy to be able to partner with so many great organizations, not only just community, but also like, um, you know, statewide and also be able to um, collaborate with Rec and Parks and Street Services to tackle both things like planting trees in the park and planting trees in the street. Well, that's great. It's a lot of work putting this thing together. Yeah, it's a lot. It's been a lot of work, but you know, it's always a joy. It's our biggest event of the year, and we're always looking forward to it. And I think this is the bigger, the best one yet. Yeah, it seems like a very, very good event. And thank you very much for putting this together. You're welcome. Thank you guys for coming. There were so many other booths that displayed information about the environment, saving the rivers and beaches, recycling, solar energy, first aid, and jobs. We just couldn't get to them all. Volunteers came from several organizations, nonprofits, and churches all over the city. Later in the day, hundreds of trees were planted at Banning Park, and volunteers were bussed to several locations in the community to plant trees. In all, over a thousand trees were planted 